All right, so horse armor rides again. Bethesda is charging $7 for a single Starfield mission, and after months of minimal post-launch support, unhappy fans are feeling ripped off. Okay. I don't know who these, these people are right here, unhappy fans, because the people that are unhappy are probably people that didn't play the game. Okay? They just hated the game from the start, right? They just didn't like Starfield from the start, so they're not really fans anymore, right? They're just unhappy gamers at this point, okay? Feeling ripped off, okay? So Starfield Creation Update added a new Bounty Hunter mission to the game for free, but if you want the second mission, it'll cost you. Now, obviously, we've always been up front, and I've always said that I hate microtransactions because microtransactions is literally just a skin, right? You pay $5, $10, $15, $20, $25, $50 for a skin. There is no content. There is nothing about it that's actual content for the game. This is a $7 piece of content, okay? And in this piece of content, okay, they give you a storyline, okay? They give you places to go, right? You have to follow the mission and do the mission. There's dialogue and story, okay? There's new guns and cosmetics that you get and rewards that you can get with inside of this. Now, I haven't played it myself, okay? Now, they did give me a 1,000 uh, credits because I they gave me the premium. I never played for Starfield. They gave me a, a code for it, and I got to play it, and I've been playing it. I have over 200 hours in the game enjoying myself with it. But I'm going to buy this because they gave me the, the coins for free. Okay, They, they rewarded me a 1,000 for having the up-tier whatever uh, addition. So I'm going to pay the $7 that's not mine uh, to, to get this, and I'm going to play the mission. Now, to someone to compare... Uh, a Fortnite skin for $5, $10, $15 for a skin. And for someone to charge $7 for actual content, character model, dialogue, story, okay, actual gear, cosmetics inside the actual thing is a lot different than paying $7 for one skin, okay? And I'm, I'm baffled by this. Now, I haven't read the article yet, okay? But for people to be, okay, for people to be upset about $7 content as a DLC, this is on top of the game that you already played. And if you don't want to pay for Starfield, you don't have to. You can literally play, pay for Game Pass and play Starfield for hundreds of hours if you wanted to without spending a cent. And on top of that, there is tons of stuff inside the creation kit that people have added for free. You don't have to pay for this specific thing. There's plenty of bounty missions that you could do for absolutely free with story, mind you, with inside the game itself. Okay, so let's read on. Okay, Starfield made a pretty big splash on Xbox Game Showcase over the weekend, serving up the first look at the upcoming Shattered Space expansion and also dropping a major update, uh, heralding that the launch of the Starfield Creation Kit, a free editor, and enables players at Bethesda to make and share new content for the game. Uh, Shattered Space looks cool, and they rolled out the creation as a they called it as they called as not has not gone over entirely well. Uh, quote: New missions have been added to Starfield as part of the update in Bethesda. Said the update announcements, the Tracker Alliance established the first several missions enable you to uh, live your best hunting life. The first mission of Star or Starjacker will also have uh, you in contact with the mysterious Tracker located in the settlement through the settled systems. From there, let's the hunts begin. Now, I played this mission, the first mission, okay? I think it's called, like, the Star Tracker or Star Jumper or something like that. And uh, I think it's called the Star Jacker, if, right? And it's a it's a short mission or whatever. You play it. It's just like any other kind of story mission that you play in the game. And there's other things on the bounty boards that you can go to. There's, like, I think there are three or four missions that you could do as well on top of that. And that's all part of the game. It's inside the game that you can go do. Um, so it's just like another quest line that you would do inside the game if you met someone randomly in the thing. So if you like that type of mission, then you can go, hey, you know what? I like that. I'm going to pay $7 uh, for that content that they've added to the game. Uh, and if I don't want to, I can still do a million other things in the game. Okay. So the problem is that the second Tracker Alliance mission, the Vulture, is only available at Starfield Creation. And it sells for $7, which really is $10, given that you'll, you'll need to purchase 1,000 Starfield Creation credits in order to have enough to access it. Now, I'm, I'm pretty sure... Oh, yeah, yeah, you can buy a $5 one. You can buy f as low as 5 but you have to do 10 as well. Except It says, The Vulture is also an official Bethesda product, so leaving aside jokes about Bethesda jank, 
It says to assume that there's a level of production quality that's not always going to be present in the fan-made stuff. Even so, there's a widespread feeling that a lot of the money for a, si for a single quest. This, this blows my mind. This absolutely blows my mind, right? And this is me not defending Starfield in any way, shape, or form, right? I've said I would pay $15 for DLC, for content, for story, okay? You add more story and content to a game, doesn't matter what that game is. If you put something behind it, I will give you money for it instead of paying $15 for one fucking skin. $50 for one fucking skin. $80 for a monkey glove in a first-person shooter game, right? There's a lot of problems here when people that are buying microtransactions across the board that are they're okay spending $70. They're okay spending an additional $70 for a pre-order game of a live service model of an expansion pass that comes out a year from now, but they're not okay spending $7 for actual content. It blows my mind. To compare the Starfield Premium Edition upgrade goes to $35 and includes a full Shattered Space expansion and the Constellation skin pack, digital art book, soundtrack, and a thousand creation credits, enough to buy the Vulture mission. Now, is Shattered Space actually just two quests in trench coats? Probably not. Redditor Mighty Novak wrote, so I doubt that even Bethesda believes it's a reasonable pricing. So at love of God, drop the price. Okay. Uh, Oblivion sold entire elaborate player houses complete with quest lines for less than $2. So accounting for inflation is also be generous to say that $3, I think, or $3 for fun quests and some cool equipment would at least be reasonable to compare of what they're currently being offered. Okay. Redditor Bubba, one, two, three, four, five, six, two. There's also somewhat more uh, uh, analyst. He says, DLC is fine. Charging $7 per quest is fucking stupid. Again, I literally downloaded a free... You know what? Let me let me open up my, my Xbox real fast and let me show you, right? You can go into Starfield, okay? And there's free quest lines that you can, like, pick up and go, go do, right? There's people that charge $5 for a complete other... You know, quest line and whatnot. Okay. It says uh, there's some pushback against the notion that players who point out that nobody has to pay for these missions and that the release of the creation kit, which means a flood of new content, all for free on sites like Nexus Mods, enough to keep everyone busy for a very long time. But it's not just the cost of the mod that's the issue for some players. Recalling that Bethesda catastrophic attempt to introduce paid mods in Skyrim in 2015, there's also a feeling that this is part of the long standing effort to. Uh, to separate gamer, separate gamers from their money. The, the uh, I, my brain's I'm hemorrhaging here. My brain, okay. Again, someone pays fifteen dollars for one skin. They'll pay ten dollars for uh, a season pass that they have to grind for, which is absolutely nothing but skins. And someone charges money for an actual DLC for a small little thing. You don't have to pay for it, by the way. You don't have to buy it. You could not buy it, and then I guarantee you, it will go down in price. Because they just put the creation kit out there. They want to see how much people will pay for it, right? If you don't want to pay for it, don't buy it. Get some of the stuff that's on the creation store for free that people are putting out there. Okay? So Bethesda quickly walked back the initial effort to charge for mods in response to angry uproar, but dipped its toes back into those waters a couple years later and launched the creation club. And they went a little deeper in 2023 with the Verified Creators Program, which enables members of the program to sell their work. And again, fine. It's still plenty of free stuff out there, but it's also a given wave of negative re uh, reaction to the news. And of course, the attend the spike of negative reviews on Steam. Here's another thing that I think is absolutely ridiculous, right? Everyone's like, I want to support creators. I want to support developers. I want to support these things. Some of the stuff that's being made for Starfield is literally by people like you and me that decided to open up the creation kit inside Steam, make an actual, their own time, one person, made a, a quest or whatever, and they're asking for $5, and they're like, the audacity of you to take your time and not make a free mod. Like, I'm, I'm blown away by this. I really am, okay? Like, we're not talking about Bethesda. We're talking about verified people that, that, that are making content like you and me that it's their, their side business, right? They're, they're making content for a game that already has content in it. Okay. So it says Starfield is drawing similar, uh, similar IRE enough uh, continuity in all new review bombing, but influx of negative reviews, sure, isn't doing it already a mixed rating on any good. So people are going back. The game that nobody wants to play, the game that nobody likes, the game that nobody actually plays, okay? 
now they're getting review bombed again because nobody's playing it. Nobody likes it. Nobody wants to do anything. But yet they're following this story really closely. Okay. So one writer said that a Pierce of Vultures sets a dangerous precedent because assuming it goes over well enough to the future content releases should be cut up, sold piece by piece, and think that it's overstating that things a bit. Now, Bethesda games typically come uh, front-loaded with massive amount of content and it's really not reasonable to expect the endless stream of post-releases more for free. But I can see where it's coming from. I don't think Starfield is a bad game, strictly speaking, but it's a standalone disappointment for Bethesda's R RPG uh, uh, in light of what the natural to think about the studio might be more inclined. Let the new monetization scheme slide for a while, and rather than using the launch for the long-weighted mod tools to lean into it. Okay, then again, Bethesda has something of history of breaking ground in the field of squeezing more money from the committed fans. The new Starfield mission has drawn many comparisons with the infamous horse armor that outraged so many Oblivion players back in 2006. Remind you, $2.50 for a skin, for one skin, for a fucking horse, back in 2006 and $7 for actual content, storyline, cosmetics, weapons, right? Is completely two different things, right? So the horse armor won, despite all the out online upset and mockery, people bought it. And the door of microtransactions is the mainstream gaming was flung open. That may be well said in case here too. And I won't dispute that the seven bucks for a single kill this guy mission is kind of bullshit. And yet, but the people are willing to pay for it then you can bet that they'll be making more in the future. Absolutely. And that's absolutely correct. If you don't like it, don't buy it. It's that simple, right? There's plenty of other content on the creation store that you can play for absolutely nothing. Okay, let me let me bring this up. Okay. Okay, in the creation store itself, okay, this is the tracker mission that they're talking about here. Okay, so let, let's click on it. Okay. So what would you rather buy? A $10 skin, which is just a skin, just a skin. Or would you rather buy, and I'm not saying $7 is, is, is good. I'm just saying $7, you get, you get the, uh, a sniper rifle. Okay. You get, includes a new tracker Alliance bounty. It gets a uh, airborne no, uh, Nova strike sniper, two additional outfits. Okay. That's two additional outfits, not one additional outfit for $10, just the outfit. Okay, you get two additional outfits. The quest becomes available at the wanted poster inside the Tracker Alliance thing, right? So you're getting multiple things, and it's an actual content. Dialogue, story, places to go, different things, right? You're not just collecting it, walking out the door, going, oh, there's the guy, collect him, and then move on, right? Yesterday, we did the Tracker Alliance tracker on stream, right? The free one, okay? You went in, you had a conversation with a person, you had to find him, you tracked him down, you talked to him. He says, well, I have a, uh, I, I know where they are. You get in a ship, you travel to a different s system, you go onto this space station with zero gravity, you start going through, killing all the people, you get to the guy, and then a story progresses, right? There's something that actually is happening here, okay? And that was free. So if it was just the exact same quest, right, but it was $7... I would rather pay $7, not that I'm paying $7, I would rather pay $7 for that than to pay $10 for one skin. I would rather pay $7 for content than to pay $80 for a monkey glove, okay? But these are just my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments section down below. What do you think about them, Bethesda, or anyone going forward, right? Again, I've said this for Suicide Squad, Marvel's Avengers, Anthem, any game that you like. If they sold Gotham Knights, which wasn't a, a live service game, I said if they added more DLC content for $10, $15, right? $20 for actual content, I have no problem buying the content because you actually put time into the actual thing to make it, okay? But if you're just putting a skin out there for $10, $15, $20, that is a problem, okay? So here, this guy, this is a $5 quest, okay? This is a $5 quest by a verified person inside the thing. Look at the detail, okay, $5 for this one, with over 1,200 lines of fully voiced professional dialogue, okay? Robin is a dynamic companion who will share her likes, dislikes, and ultimate influence of the journey as much as they influence her, okay? In this, you get a morale and ethnic complex, right? You get unique blend of humor, reacts to the background, commend of her in battle, a growing story with this actual companion, load order friendly, right? Into the future, she actually goes along with you. This, this content for this person for $5 has her own backstory, has her own missions that you go on. You get to know the actual companion, and this is $5.
But these people that are complaining are complaining that $7 is too much for content and they would rather go shit $80 out of their ass so they can get a monkey glove from Call of Duty or $15 to get a skin for V-Bucks inside of Fortnite. Okay, again, these are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments section down below. Please make sure you share, like, subscribe. And if you like what I do here, please check out some of our other video. Thanks for watching.